Hi everyone, this is Deborah. I'm back with you again for another video this afternoon. What I'm going to do today is show you uh, where I'm up to with my junk journal. So I've put it together. Now, this junk journal is really just something that I've put together with lots of different papers. So some of them I like and some of them now they're in there I don't actually like. But um, you'll see, so this is a printed on matte photo paper, an image that I've downloaded off the internet. That one too. This one is also matte photo paper with a printed image. So that is the other side of this. I've just printed two images on the one sheet. And that's the rest of the music. That's a piece of cardstock. And then I've got more plain cardstock. I've got some craft cardstock with some plain um, paper and book pages and some more cardstock, more plain paper. So that's that signature. And in this one, I haven't really tried to be very consistent. I've just sort of put together what I've had on hand. So this is a print of ephemera that I got when I was away on holidays in Hobart recently. And I've just printed it onto some um, matte cardstock. That's some of my book that I've put in there, a book page. Some more images that I've printed. This is the other side of one that was a short piece of paper. And I've got some more cardstock, uh, sorry, paper. That's the other side of that. This is a printed on photocopy paper that I've printed out as a test page and thought I may as well use it. It's another piece of paper there and just some more of the um, paper that I'm using which is a letter writing paper or invitation paper it's just plain matte paper then I've got more of the craft card stock uh, this is the one that I don't really like so I'll probably cover that up it's just some paper that I had on hand some 12 by 12 I cut down the other thing you'll probably see is that they're all different sizes I'm not too worried about that because I've sort of use what I have on hand. I know a lot of the junk journals that you see are incredibly neat and all the one size but not mine. So this is um, this is where I uh, did a test with a stencil. I was doing some testing and I've got a video on that so I'll show you that. This is just some paper from a little book that I had and then I've got some more paper with a bit of ink on it. That's just uh, that's just photocopy paper. Here's some Tim Holtz cardstock. This is the back half of the star one and obviously if you get one on one side you'll get it on the other. This one I've just cut with the punch so I'm probably going to create a little pocket out of that when I do it. And the back of the one I don't like. And then this here is Tim Holtz cardstock and it's only 8x8 eight eight, so what I've done is I've sewn two pieces together and then folded the excess down piece of graph paper some more stenciling that I was doing another piece of Tim Holtz papers together folded down and another piece of that cards um, paper then I've got the rest of the Tim Holtz part graph paper the other part of Tim Holtz and that's the back and this is the cover so far I've not finished covering it at the moment it's just an old book and that's the one I've been using for all different things and I've just pulled the guts out of it and covered it so it's a hardcover book and I've uh, sewn my signatures in on this piece here. I might actually end up sticking that down but I've got five signatures in there that you can see. The other thing which is probably different to what a lot of people do is between my signatures I've left quite a bit so it's about a I think it's a quarter of an inch that I've left oh well a centimeter so just over a quarter of an inch that I've left between the signatures the reason that I did that is because I do like to do a lot of lumpy bumpy stuff so I like to have a lot of dimension and I didn't want the book to be sort of um, let me see open like that when it was full I want it hopefully to still be able to close like this and I'll put a clasp on it. So now what am I going to do with it? What I'm going to do is 
I have this book here. Let's put my stuff aside. And this is a book that I did many years ago. And it's a book about the places that I have lived. And I've started pulling it apart. But I had it in the shop and it was a spiral bound book. And what happened was people started looking at it and they've just, they pulled it apart. So I put this concertina thing on the side to try and save it. But it really didn't work and I haven't really finished it. So I've decided I'm going to pull that apart and put it into here. I have um, already started doing that and there are several elements that I want to save from here including this gorgeous uh, lock door handle and I've got a little key on there as well and that's a photo of me when I was a little baby and so I've started with number one and I go through I think I'm up to about 31 different houses that I've lived in now and I've started doing that so I've pulled this apart and I'll show you what I've done to date so I've still got to do my journaling on there. I'm going to put the photo, baby photo on the front there. And this will be the first one. So I've got in here, I've got some tags. And I'm going to stick that here. So this is number one. I lived in, well, I was born in a town called Ardlethan, which is in country New South Wales. And uh, the reason I was born there was because I lived in a, a pub. My parents owned a pub at the time I was born in a teeny tiny country town called Beckham and we didn't actually um, have a hospital in Beckham and so I was born in Ardlethan and that's why that was my first place of residence. I was in hospital when I was born. Mum was there for five days and so was I and I spent my first Christmas in hospital because I was born on the 21st of December and we weren't released until Boxing Day. So that's number one. My intention, which I've done in the other book, is to number all of these. This is a picture from the early 90s, a bad, a bad picture of uh, the, the clothes we used to wear back then. So don't judge me, please. If you lived through the 80s and the 90s, you'll know that. Now, I did start doing some writing on here, but my pen actually bled on the tag. So I'm not sure if I'm going to redo that journaling I've got another tag the same I may well redo it the idea is that I'm going to pop that in there and then that will be number one and on this side because I don't really like this paper I may well do some um, more journaling in fact I probably will do a full journal there about what um, you know what was happening at the time when I was born which is a long time ago now and then this is page two what I've got for here is I've pulled this out of the existing book and also the photo and I've put it on a piece of Tim Hotz cardstock and I'm probably going to put it down here because I want to do some writing up here just again I mean this is a journal that's what they're meant to be used for is to capture your thoughts and I'm not going to do that right now because that'll take forever if I'm sitting here thinking about what I'm going to write. But I wanted to show you that not only is creating a journal fun, but you should use them. And you can use them for random things. You can use them for single topics like I'm doing. You can use them as travel. I've got to make one because when I go overseas next year, I want to have one for then. So I'm going to pop that one down there. This is just a photo of um, me and my sisters and my cousins when we were little. So put that down there. So this is number two and I've got some tags. So I've got something to go on this page and I've got some tags. And this is a photo of me and my sister. And I wanted to just put that down and then I'm going to cut around that. I had journaled on the back of this, but I actually think that it's going to um, be too, it's going to be too um, flimsy is the word I'm looking for. And when, when I pull it out, I'm worried that it's not going to 
stay. It's going to get all wrecked when I pull it out. So I'm trying to make this sturdy so that it will last. And hopefully in years to come, people will look at this and say, wow, gee, she moved a lot. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm averaging uh, one house every two years of my life. So it's probably not the best, but just how things have turned out for me. This is the pocket that I made for this to go in. And um, I've also got uh, family and dad. Now, I did make this pocket, but I don't like the number two on there. I did it with a stencil, and I'm not happy with it. So I like the, um, the tag with the waterfall, you know, the three slip-in pockets. I don't like that. So I'm just looking how I can update that so it doesn't look too strange ink that raw edge because otherwise it's really noticeable the white of the edge is amazing that little bit of white and I'm just going to stick them down like on top of one another and then I can put the number two here and it's not blocking the pocket or anything these twiddly bits alphabets Let's see, I've been cleaning up and I'm just really amazed at how much I've actually got, which is pretty bad. I mean, most of this is left over from when I had the shop, although I did get rid of a lot of it. And also, uh, I gave a heap of it to Goodwill, but for some reason I still seem to have a lot left. So I think that there was stuff I couldn't find at the time, so I'm just using it all up. It's um, the second house that I've lived in which is actually not a house at all, but this old pub and the family lived upstairs. But I think that this page that I'm going to put it on is just a bit too white. So I just wanted to um, put, just wanted to maybe put something under here or maybe I'll do some journaling, yeah. I'll do some journaling there to cover that up a bit. The other thing is that this is quite wide for the page, but I'm so I'm going to let it overlap a little bit. So on the other side, you'll see a bit of the cardstock, making sure it's all stuck down, and popping my tags in. So. the sister one at the back because that's quite big. I must remember when I do the others not to make them quite so big. In fact I'm going to cut that down a bit more. Okay so I've cut that down, a bit of ink and I think that's going to work much better so let's pop that in now. Yep that's much better. And I've got the family and the dad ones to do yet. So that's number two. And obviously my journaling. And then number three. This is the page for number three. I think I've got about 80 pages in here. So I think I've got plenty to do the uh, houses I've lived in so far with uh, room to spare. Because I'm sure I haven't stopped moving yet. I'm just going to cut this out. It doesn't want to come up very well. So this is a piece of craft card. Just putting that on there. It's heavier than paper. It's quite nice. Buy it in a pack of ten from Riot or places like that. This is a piece of packaging that I got off something I bought. There's no reason why you can't use it. You can even use that side of it. I just uh, want the back side of it. Let's do 
deciding where that's going to go. You're probably there. That's nice. This is some Tim Holtz washi tape. I think it's Tim. Pretty sure. It's just some script. I don't like this edge because where I printed it on the paper it's left the white edge. And I'm just going to I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to stick this down. That's part of the packaging. But you probably, if you've watched my videos, you know that I like to use everything, including the packaging. And why not? I've got these cards, and these are words that I'm probably not going to use. So I'm thinking I can cut these down to make the word house. So I think this one's now finished. And the reason that I wrote on the actual book page was because I thought that you know I mean I don't like my writing that much and this kind of disguises it and yet you can still read it so there's a tip if you don't like your writing that much still do it but just put it on something that gives it makes it a little bit hidden or else you can just do normal hidden journaling put it on a tag and pop it in something so you can't see it when you open the book into my book again it's going over a little bit on that side but I don't mind that I like that torn edge I'm not going to change it so that's the page for house number three that I lived in you can always add a lot more than that it's really up to you but for me I think that uh, at the moment that's enough I may come back and add some something else and there's certainly scope there to do so and uh, I'll catch you next time. Cheers!